Okay, so I have been working on my channel for about four years and I have like five videos up because I have, hold on, my thing is falling. First of all, I don't particularly like um, being on the camera. So that's, I think a lot of it what um, stops me. But anyway, um, I have been wanting to film this video of tips for a while because when I was first starting out, I didn't have any experience with doing markets or um, vendor events, anything like that. I had nobody to ask, nobody in my family was an entrepreneur. Um, like I literally just had to figure it out, watched a lot of YouTube videos and um, read a lot of blog posts and things like that. This is falling. And so um, I figured I've learned along the way, I've been doing it for about five years. So I've learned quite a bit and I figured I can help you out and give you the tips that I've learned. And these are, I've done craft shows, small vendor events, um, large, large events, and ones with like thousands of people and some with just a few hundred. And there's been a few times it's been like five people, literally customers, five, five customers. So um, that one I did leave early. So, okay, these are three. Three of the most important tips to me, in my opinion, that will help you be successful at a market or vendor event. Number one is to engage. You want to engage with the customers walking past. Um, and what I mean by that is speak to everybody. Just smile and say, hey, how are you? Um, good afternoon, good morning, whatever, just speak. Um, you don't have to be salesy, you don't have to be pushy, you don't even have to want them to come in your booth, but just being nice. Um, and the reason that works is, number one, you can't go wrong with just speaking to anybody anyway. But number two, obviously the reason we're set up at markets is to get customers and to make a sale. So when you speak to people, you're likely to engage with someone that may not see you. And what I mean by that is when people go to markets, sometimes they um, are there for a specific item. So they may not be there to get like, okay, I sell soap. So they may not be coming for soap. They may be coming for um, colored greens. And so if you, hold on. okay. So if they're there for collard greens, they're not gonna see your soap because they're not thinking about soap. So when they're walking past, if you just speak, then they have to look your way. Normally, if they're nice, they're gonna look your way and then they're gonna say, oh, well, let me see what you have. So that's just an ideal way to engage with a customer because number one, never hurts to speak to anybody. And number two, they may not see you otherwise. And that's what I mean by that is they're there probably for something specific. And so they may not be looking for what you have, but they may want what you have. They just don't know it. Um, okay, so that's number one. Number two is to inform. You want to inform customers about what you sell. And you don't have to be salesy and you don't have to be pushy. You're just informing. So what I mean by that is if a customer comes into your booth, and let's just say, I'm gonna use me for an example, um, I sell soap. If they come in and they're a new customer and I don't know them, I say, hey, how are you? Um, I, everything here I make from scratch. We do have our own goats. Um, I use our fresh goat's milk in my soaps and then in my lip balms. We have our own bees and so I use our local unrefined beeswax in my products that use wax. And um, because these are tidbits of information that to me are important. Um, it's what my business is about. And they may not know that just by coming in and looking. Let me turn this air conditioner off. Okay, thing's really loud. Um, so they may not know that otherwise. I mean, obviously if they start reading my labels, they can see that it's handcrafted and all this, but they may not know that it's me that makes it because some people have other people sell their stuff for them. So to me, it's important to inform your customers as to who you are and about a little bit about your business. And it doesn't have to take long, just literally like 10 seconds. And then you'll be able to tell if they care or not. You know, if they ask questions, obviously you answer. And if they just kind of don't even look up at you, I've had some people do that. They don't even look up. They're just like, mm -hmm, and they're just looking. I know that they really don't care and that's fine. And so I kind of step back a little bit and let them look. And I just say, well, let me know if you have any questions. 
And because I'm not there to be a salesperson, I'm there to just have my products. And if someone wants them, they're welcome to buy them. I would love for them to, um, but I'm not going to push, be pushy because nobody appreciates that. So number two is inform, just inform them about what makes your product special. Because like I said, they're not going to know just you know, obviously, but, and sometimes we assume other people know, but they may not know. Like some people are really surprised that I make everything from scratch, that I formulate all my recipes, that everything is made in small batches. Some people are like, really? They was thinking I was like reselling, I guess. I don't know. And the same with you. If you make jewelry or something like that, they may think you buy it from China. You know you make it, but they don't know that. So they need to like either you can have pictures and, you know, you can, if, if someone asks that way, you can say, yeah, you can go to, you know, show them a few pictures. Or if you have a Facebook page or something like that, you can refer them to that way. You can say, oh yeah. Um, you know, if you want to watch me make whatever it is that you make, um, you know, I, I do post some videos on my Facebook page or on YouTube or whatever. That way someone can actually see you making the product. So you're just informing them. Number two. All right, number three is to have a clear and concise setup. You really don't want to have like 20 different um, things going on in your booth. And you want to have a nice clean tent with a nice clean tablecloth and a nice clean setup. And what I mean by that is, um, and I'm guilty of this, so I'm not practicing what I preach, but I just know it's the right thing. And it's not always practical or are possible and it's not always going to happen but if you can try oh lord I'm not losing. but if you can try you want to have your tablecloths um not wrinkled not stained you want them to look nice and neat and professional and your tent needs to be in good working condition which i've had you know my tent falling in my tablecloth's been ruined before so I, I know it's not always perfect but if you can try if you can shoot for that um then that, that always looks good because then it looks more professional. And then if you sell multiple things, like if you sell um, skincare products and soaps, and let's just say you also make, um, I can't even think of anything like uh, earrings, and you also make scarves, and you also make, I don't know, um, cheese, and you also make, I can't even think of stuff, goodness, um, baskets, you weave baskets. If you have all these things going on in your booth, someone's going to walk in and they're going to be like, oh, it looks like a little too cluttered, confusing. People get decision fatigue. They can't figure out what they want because you got so much going on. So not to say that you can't have all those things, but like, let's just say you weave baskets. Have your soaps inside the basket that you weaved. And if they make a comment about, oh, I like that basket, you can say, oh, I made that basket. And I'll also sell those. You know, you, there's ways that you could sneaky kind of introduce it without having like a, a thing of baskets, a thing of scarves, and a thing of earrings and soap and all this stuff all mixed together. Because that, to me, just gives off a mixed message to somebody because they're going to think that it's just um, just too, too much going on. Um, but, you know... Uh, not to say that you can't sell multiple things because you do whatever works for you. But I'm just saying when I go somewhere, um, to me, it's better if it's, um, you know, right away what that person sells. Like you come in my booth, you know, I sell soap. There's no question. My biggest displays are my soap, um, because that's my primary product. Now I do sell lip balms and I sell like lotions and creams. Those are secondary. Um, my focus is my soap. So those are my big displays. And I do have the complementing products, which are like the lotions and lip balms and scrubs and bath bombs and that kind of stuff. And I try to keep those to the side a little bit. I mean, not really to the side. Those aren't in big, big as big displays like my soap. Um, so that would be my third tip would to just keep things clear and concise and clean, you know, like all your, um, tablecloths and stuff, keep them clean. Um, and that just gives a more professional look. Okay, so those are my three tips for market. Um, but I also have four must-haves. And these are not um, something that's like a personal perspective. These are just things that um, or four tips that I've learned that you really need if you're going to set up at a market or a vendor event. And number one is a square reader. Most people do not have cash, so you need some sort of a square reader or a way to accept credit card. Number two is plenty of $1 bills. So you want like 
I, I do like $75, but everybody's different on how much you need. You, I would say at minimum 50, but you need plenty of ones and maybe some fives and a 10 because I have literally had somebody come with a hundred dollar bill, like first, the first customer that I had and they got like, I don't know, $30 worth of stuff. So I had to like give them $70 of my change back. Now that is, you know, I didn't want to turn away the sale for fear of losing my change, but that can happen. So you want to have, you'd rather have extra than not enough. But then again, if you know the vendors around you, a lot of times, like to your left or right or cross, if you can get to know them or at least meet them when you first get there, if this isn't a routine vendor event, a lot of times they'll make change for you. I've had to ask that before, like, hey, can I have 10 ones and, you know, do an exchange, but you don't want to be doing that the whole show. So just have plenty of ones. And number three is to have a snack and a water. Um, you just, you never know when you're, you may get so busy, you can't get away from your booth. So you just want to have a little snack and some water to drink. Um, preferably you could have somebody with you, but if you can't have somebody with you, then, um, you know, just make sure that you speak to the person to your left and to your right when you start the vendor event and, you know, have your drink and your snack. That way, if you have to use the restroom or something like that, you can ask the people to your left or right to kind of like watch your booths because you don't want to miss out on some sales just because you have to go to the bathroom. So a lot of times, you know, people are super nice at these events and they will help you, especially if you're by yourself. Uh, and number four would be check the weather. And that's important for us, especially those of us that sell soap and bath and body stuff because our stuff cannot get wet. Um, I've had a... Uh, a time. I've had a time before. I usually check the weather. I mean, I always check the weather, but I always tell myself I'm not going to go if it's going to rain. If there's even a slight chance, a 30% chance of rain, I'm not going. Um, well, a couple months ago, I went to a market and there was a chance of rain, but I had paid like, I don't remember, like 150 or 100 and something. I don't know. It was like close to 200 bucks to do this market. And I was like, I really don't want to not do this market because it's a, it's a pretty big event. And there was a chance of rain, but I thought, mm, it'll just, maybe it'll pass. Oh, honey, no, 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 it did not pass. It, well, it passed right by us and landed right on top. And my tent doesn't have sides. And so I had to put the tent down. My stuff got ruined. So much of my stuff got ruined. Um, like labels and all that kind of stuff. And yeah, that cost you money because it's money and time and your labels and your ink and then your product. So it's just not worth going if there's a chance of rain and you have the type of product that will be ruined by rain. So um, I've got an event coming up this weekend and I need to go to like Sam's or somewhere and get a tent with sides because there um, were people at this event that I was at a couple months ago, they had sides on their tent and they were fine. You know, I was like scrounging around because I had no sides and the rain was like blowing in sideways. But anyway, so check the weather and just be prepared. So um, I hope these tips were helpful. And if you are an entrepreneur or someone starting a small business, um, I hope that this will help you because I know that just getting started, it can be tough. And um, sometimes it's these little tips and these little things that don't seem like they're important, but they actually are. You know, like engaging with people, like I was telling you, that's super important. And you want to stand up. Like when someone comes into your booth, you don't want to just be like, sitting there on your phone like mm, you know that you look like you're not interested and it looks like it gives off the impression that you could care less whether they're in your booth or not so you want them to know that i'm losing you again you want them to know that you're glad they're there and that's like someone coming into your house and you open the door you let them in and you go sit down on the couch i mean they'll be like okay uh hello you don't want to do that so if someone comes into your home you stand up, you open the door, and, um, you know, oh, I just I just got an Etsy sale. Yay. So, anyway, um, you let, let them come into your booth, and when they do, you stand up and greet them, and then we talk about, like, a, you know, that's when you do your informing and things like that. But um, main thing is, you know, you just, you don't stay just sitting down like you're disinterested because... Um, you are interested. That's why you're there. You don't want to be sitting out um, at a market all day in 90 degree weather or 30 degree weather or whatever and not make a sale. That's why you're there. So stand up, talk to people, and engage, inform, and have a nice setup and have your square reader, your change, your drink, and your snack and check the weather. Bye guys.